I think for me, it was songwriting for sure, because I remember being six or seven years old, making up songs, and I couldn't play mm -hmm. anything but drums. All I could play back then was drums. And so what happened was I kind of got thrusted into playing keys out of necessity. Like our church needed a musician. I'm a, I'm a PK. So if there's any PKs in the room, right. you know, right. we, we're kind of like, you know, we, we, we get in where we fit in. And so um, our musician, took a job in Florida and uh, my dad looked at me and was like, hey, you've been kind of hanging around, go ahead and step up. You know, he prayed for my hands. I started playing and um, that was at 13 and I just kept on going. So, and then the next thing was, oh, I, I can write songs, but I need tracks. So I started learning mm -hmm. how to program and everything was just out of necessity. I started learning right, you know, how to do the right. things I needed. Then I started listening to cats like you, you know, with songwriters point of view and uh, Bible stories and like everything from you know from that point on and just listening how uh, those vocals were arranged and different people I remember the Color Blind album by John P. Key was like a heavy yep. Yep. heavy inspiration back then so you know just picking up things along the way that's what's up man tell so, everybody some of the you know some of the artists and um some of the artists that you actually have either written for or even sung behind. I know you did some stuff with um, with my boy Jonathan Nelson. And, yes, sir. Uh, yes. Yeah, so just kind of kind of let the people know some of those, you know, those artists that you've actually been connected sure to. Sure thing. I've, I've written for Dietrich Haddon. I've written for Shirley Murdoch. Uh, I've written and produced for Tone A. I've sung behind and uh, traveled with PJ Morton for two years during the Walk Alone album. And um, as you said, Jonathan Nelson and Man, just been blessed to kind of do. I, even uh, Sean Bigby, Sean Bigby did, yeah. did one of my songs. Um, matter of fact, it's the, it's bow down. It's it was the called the Earth. Yeah, the Earth, the Earth is the Lord's. Same, same yep. And and that recording was never released, but I think that was through Gospel Heritage. Uh -huh. But man, yeah, man, God's been good. God's been good, and it's been wow. like on the low. It's been on the low, and right, it's really, right. you know, right. just now starting to, to make some noise. And I'm grateful, man. That's what's up, man. Yes, sir. So, so dig into that arranging element. Um, when you actually, how, I mean, what's your what's your your process to that? Is it more music music driven? Um, yes. And then you kind of arrange the vocals around that, or you kind of have that vocal yeah. vocal thing set, and then you kind of bring the music around it. I mean, how, I mean, what's your what's your thing? It usually happens music first. Um, I get the music, get the music first, and then I start arranging the vocals against the melodic uh, arrangement. And it just depends, you know, on the style. Um, if it's an R and B okay. kind of style, you know, one, I like to kind of pull from the Eric Dawkins kind of vein, you know, yeah. that that approach. Yeah. And uh, yeah. then if it's something choral, you know, I love uh, what you and Donald do. And of course, like Thomas Whitfield and some others, you know, just trying to, to pull from those uh, those influences. And so it's definitely music first and then vocals. And um, when I'm recording stuff where I'm stacking vocals, um, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm probably doing like four or six parts uh, I should say four or six tracks per part um, right. to kind of, you know, but you know, I ran into some quartet cats. Um, I did a quartet song and they were doing like two per part and they were getting the job done with that. I guess it just depends on the, the kind of sound you want. Yeah. The color, the color and the texture, basically. Um, mm -hmm. One of the things I've known, I, I've known that <clears throat> usually more, the, the more, almost the more stacks you do, I mean, you don't want to, it all depends on, you know, the, like you said, the vein in which you're, you're actually arranging for, but sometimes the more, the more stacks you do, it almost creates its own vocal mix, right. which makes it, makes it a lot easier to, to mix and master yeah. um, when it comes to that versus like, if you just do like one or two passes, then then that individual voice tends to kind of stick out. So sometimes you have to kind of yeah. kind of watch that in the mix. But when it starts to thicken up, it just kind of like creates its own its own cover, so to speak. 
Um, right. Which, you know, so that so a lot of times that's why people, you know, prefer to, um, you know, to stack, like you said, four to six, even eight times, depending on what it's called for in cases right. like that. But that's what's up, man. What's